Hello again, this is Travis, and we are going to continue our journey into the Web3 ecosystem. In the previous video, we looked at connecting your bank account to your centralized exchange and purchasing crypto there. And now in this video, we're going to create a Web3 wallet and then transfer crypto from the exchange into the wallet. Okay, so I could put a, a dividing vertical line down here like this. And on the left hand side is the world of centralization, uh, where you have these intermediaries, these regulated companies and the custodians of your crypto or your fiat, if you're talking about the bank. Uh, on the right, though, once you have created your Web3 wallet, you are now firmly in the decentralized world. You are self-custodying your crypto at this point, and it's a big transition, this step. So we'll talk more about that later on. But first, I want to show you the steps for creating a Web3 wallet. And we're going to start with MetaMask, which is the most popular Web3 Wallet software. It is a Chrome extension, so I'm actually downloading MetaMask on the Google Chrome extension store. It's going to download, and if I click on it, it's going to open up this onboarding screen here for MetaMask. So MetaMask is a brand of cryptocurrency wallet. It is the most popular. Um, it's a browser extension, would be the form factor or the type of application. There are others that I can get into later on, like hardware wallets, and they're also creating mobile apps for iOS and Android, uh, mobile cryptocurrency wallets. But just understand that the most popular wallets at this time uh, are um, browser extension wallets, like we're going to see here, and MetaMask is the most popular browser extension wallet, so it's a good place to start. So we're going to get started. This is an onboarding screen right here, and I'm going to create a wallet. I'm going to not share analytics with them. I'm gonna create a password. Agree to their terms and conditions, create. Now this is a good video, especially for people who are onboarding to a Web3 wallet for the first time. It explains something that we're going to see here in a second called a secret recovery phrase. Uh, this is just a good minute and a half video that explains what it is and the precautions that you need to take with that. But I'm going to explain it to you in this video so we don't need MetaMask's video here. So if I click next, we're, we get taken to this screen, which is a secret recovery phrase. And uh, this is interesting. This is a design pattern that you don't really see often, something that's concealed like this. And when I click it, it is going to reveal the password on the UI here. So this secret recovery phrase, it's called a phrase because it's a 12 word phrase. And this represents my private key. When I create a wallet, it creates a private key and a public key. The public key is what I give out to people. I'm gonna show you this on the UI once I've created the wallet, but the public key is kind of like an email. If I want to, um, if I want somebody to pay me in crypto, then I give them my public key or my uh, crypto or Ethereum address, however you wanna think of that. And then they send crypto to that wallet and I receive it to the wallet. Now to spend it or to send any transaction from my crypto wallet, I need this private key right here. And this is something that you never tell anybody. You never show this to anybody because people who have this private key have access to your crypto. They can um, download MetaMask, type this in and recover your wallet and then take crypto from your wallet and put it into theirs and effectively steal it. So um, I'm, going to, I'm gonna show you this recovery process a little later on. Um, so I just copied it, which is the first thing that they tell you not to do. You don't want to copy this and store it on your computer. What people usually do is either remember it or write this down on a physical piece of paper and then store it in a safety deposit box. Um, I'm copying it just to speed up this video, but understand that that's like one of the worst things you can do because you could have this 
some sort of virus on your computer that like maybe a hacker says, look for things on the computer that look like this 12 or 24 word secret phrase and then send it to me secretly um, once you find it. And then in that way, they, the hacker can access your private key. Um, but I'm going to continue on here. Uh, the next screen is to make sure that we have backed up our security phrase correctly. So I've written it down correctly and I have it in the right order. The order definitely matters, but since I am, actually it's not gonna let me paste it in. So I'll do this manually, replace frequent cram robust. Cram robust, shallow fuel clog heart, shallow fuel clog heart, wrestle stuff elephant. Oh, shit, I must have missed something. Replace frequent cram robust, shallow fuel clog, replace frequent cram robust, shallow fuel clog, heart fog rest. Okay, heart. Fog, wrestle, elephant stuff. Actually, I think it's stuff elephant. Okay, so you see how I put in the the recovery phrase incorrectly. It didn't let me confirm, which means they, they think that I didn't back it up correctly. When I change the order, and when I get it to the correct position, if this will ever <laughs> go, okay, then it allows me to confirm. It says, congratulations, you've created your wallet. You've successfully stored your private key and we can continue on into the metamask interface this is a browser extension so i can go up here to extensions and i can click on metamask and i can get this drop down right here this is kind of the mini view um, or i can see this expanded view which is pretty nice here so in the next video i'm going to go in depth on what all of these features are within this wallet and show you in depth like the step by steps to send crypto to somebody and what's happening but now we're going to transfer crypto from the uh, crypto exchange into this decentralized wallet right here and this is going to be me self-custodying the crypto Okay, so here is my Coinbase account. Now let's use our imagination here. This is not my real Coinbase account and I actually don't have any crypto in here. Um, but what I would do is I would get the address. This is the public address of my wallet right here. I'm gonna, uh, let's see, I'll paste it in right here. This is what this looks like. It's kind of like my username. You can think of it that way. And I would go to Ethereum and I would go to, actually, let's go to um, that's not working. Oh, yeah. Sorry. So I go up here to the top right to send, receive. I want to go to send Ethereum. It's saying that I don't have any Ethereum, which is understandable. What I do is put in the public address right here and I click confirm. I might have to pay a small transaction fee, maybe 50 cents to several dollars, depending on um, what Coinbase is charging at this time. And within several minutes, I would expect the crypto to land in my MetaMask wallet. Okay, so I did something a little sneaky here. I, instead of actually moving crypto from Coinbase into this wallet, I uh, did something called an Ethereum testnet, which allows me to get fake ether into this wallet. So if you can see up here at the top right, I'm connected to the Robston Ethereum testnet. And now I have um, fake ether in here. So it's just this automated software that pays you out fake Ethereum. And that's how I got it in here instead of manually doing it through the Coinbase exchange. So um, right now that we, we looked at how we created a wallet and we looked at the secret backup phrase, which is this 12 word thing. And that encodes your private key, which you use to send transactions to the web three and to the blockchain and all that. And I'm gonna get more into detail on the cryptography that's happening. I'm gonna keep it at a high level and not get too in the technical weeds, um, but I will get more into the cryptography behind web three in another video. But um, this, MetaMask app that we have just installed 
has stored this private key on here. And now I wanna go through this scenario where if you have deleted your MetaMask like I'm doing right now, so I'm gonna remove it from Chrome and I'm gonna click remove, or maybe your computer got broken or the hard drive got wiped out and you essentially lost your the private key store um, for MetaMask. So I'd have to go back here. Let's say I, I have a new computer. I need to re-download MetaMask for the first time in this new computer. And what does this recovery process look like for your wallet? We know that we have a secret recovery phrase, so this probably has to do with uh, Web3 wallet recovery. And in this initial onboarding screen for MetaMask, we have two options. This first time around, I did the create wallet. That's what you saw before. Now I'm gonna show you what it looks like to import the wallet. So I go to import and what I'm doing is I'm copying this, my 12 word recovery phrase, pasting it in here. I'm creating a new password. And this password just protects the private key. It actually encrypts it and it unencrypts it when I type the password in. So it allows me to have like a local safety net. So if somebody gets access to my phone or this computer, they can't just immediately send my crypto to themselves they have to first unencrypt it with this password down here. But this is the secret recovery phrase that accesses the crypto account. You can recover it from any device um, around the world. And as you can see, now I have recovered my original account. And if I go up to this uh, Robston network up here, I've got to activate testnet networks. And if I go back up to Robston, then now I have recovered that 0.19 ETH. And this is what web3 recovery looks like so now let's talk about why web3 wallets are so scary to new users and it's it's such a new mental model for people as i said before this is the centralized world of custodianship where when my crypto is sitting in a coinbase account coinbase is actually custodying my crypto they're responsible for the private keys and the security that goes into maintaining that and let's say they were hacked and some of my crypto was stolen, well, maybe they're gonna be on the line and they're gonna have insurance for um, getting my crypto back. It's the same thing with when you have a bank account, you're FDIC insured. And if somebody gets access to your credit card or debit card and they're spending transactions over there, then your bank is actually going to insure you and recover your funds for you. In Web3, it's very different when I, transfer from exchange to web3 wallet now i'm firmly in the world of decentralized self-custody and this means that i am fully responsible for the crypto that i am custodying in my metamask it's very similar to custodying a, a gold bar somebody could come and steal it from me i could go out into the middle of the woods and bury it in some secret location but if I forget 10 years down the road where exactly I buried it, then I've lost that gold. It's the exact same thing with when you're self custody in crypto. If you lose your private key, if you lose this 12 word recovery phrase, then you've effectively lost your crypto forever. It's not a big deal when you only have 0.2 ETH, but some people have hundreds of thousands, millions of dollars worth of crypto in their Web3 wallets and other valuable assets like NFTs as well. So this is something that is very hard for new users to wrap their head around. It's a lot of responsibility that goes into um, having to custody your crypto and um, really, yeah, safeguarding your private key. Cool, so just to summarize what we did, we looked at the process of creating a Web3 wallet. I'm gonna go into more detail in another video on what is happening cryptographically when you create this wallet. Uh, and then moving the crypto from your centralized account into your decentralized account and what UX pain points do people have or concerns that they have when they're first moving into this Web3 wallet. It's a big transition from the centralized world into the decentralized world of self-custody. So thank you guys. Bye.